Today, I want to talk about things that I quit that instantly made my life better. Before we get into this, I just want to thank all 23 subscribers that have subscribed to my channel. It means the world to me that you are tuning in a part of this journey. We're all part of this community together. I'm so appreciative. And please let me know in the comments video ideas that you'd like to hear from me because I'm so down to be able to take these kind of journeys together. So thank you again from the bottom of my heart and let's get into it. Okay, the first thing that I quit, hustle culture. I quit fast paced mornings and over scheduling myself. I was over scheduling every Every second of my day pre-planning thinking of all the different things I needed to do all the time and never once really tuning into my body and into my soul of what I really wanted and what I really needed I was raised in an environment where the more you were doing the more value that you gave forth towards the world at least that's what the preconception of it was so I thought the more that I did the more valuable I was but in reality the more that I was doing and over scheduling myself the more that I was saying no to who I really was and what I really needed so I would burn the candle at both ends I would work all day I would wake up super early and I would already be looking at work the second I got up I would already be thinking of all the errands I needed to run that day sometimes those things can feel really gratifying when you are knocking them off and crossing them off a checklist but in my case the body would keep a score and later on in the week maybe Monday through Tuesday and Wednesday I would feel this sense of like okay I'm getting through it I'm grinding this feels so good and then Thursday Friday Saturday I would feel really bad I would feel really drained and tired and out of it and not want to really do anything and not really have much energy and then I would think of all the things I needed to do to get ready for the week and it was this vicious cycle so when I stopped every day trying to prove myself that I can do so much I started really leaning into slow mornings appreciation for each moment taking a breath before I did something thinking in my mind do I really need to do this right now if I need to right if we're out of a certain thing and we need it then of course I can schedule that in or I can buy it online and have it brought right to me but if I don't need to do something right now for me right now it's a very easy thing for me to just let that go I was the first person into the office and the last person to leave at my current corporate job when I was starting out. And I thought at the time, that's what separated me from other people. Be the first one in, be the last one to leave. In reality, now everybody's in power to be able to have more of a work-life balance, to be able to have time to be able to really devote towards being the best employee that you can be or the best person that you can be at what you're doing, but also time to be able to connect with yourself, take a break from work and not have such rigid scheduling all the time where you're always on. I don't know if any of you can relate to this, but whenever I was trying to relax whenever I would say okay I need to just do nothing right now I would lay down maybe take a seat on the couch and try to decompress and then I would instantly think of something that I forgot to do or I'd see a, a box that was out of place in the living room that I needed to move around or sort or organize or clean and before you knew it I was back to doing tasks all the time let me tell you quitting that lifestyle that is the first thing that started leading towards a better life for me. Because now when I wake up in the morning, the first thing that I do, I turn the kettle on, I turn all the salt lamps on, I sit on the couch, and as the water is heating up, my cat, 99.9% .9 of the time, is already greeting me on my lap, purring. And instead of looking at my computer or my phone, all the different things I need to do that day, I'm just with her. And my wife is sleeping in the other room. Those moments are sacred for me. And if I have those moments every day, they add up over time. Those slow moments have really helped me start to enjoy life in a way that I didn't enjoy before that. So if any of you are over scheduling yourself, try taking some time for yourself and thinking, do I really need to do these things? Chances are you don't need to do most of them. You just need to connect with yourself. The next thing that I quit, sugar. I know, but I definitely had a real sugar problem and it wasn't a conventional sugar problem. I wasn't drinking soda and eating a bunch of sugared cereal all the time, but I was definitely putting things into my system that I thought were healthy, but in reality, weren't they were filled with sugar and they were just feeding the addiction that I would have I cut all types of sugar out except for naturally occurring sugar that comes in fruit not dried fruit whole fruits when I was having too much sugar I was constantly tired between hustle culture and having too much sugar they kind of go hand in hand because you're doing so much you need quick little things that are gonna make you feel good and it creates a little dopamine spike and before you know it you're craving more so every time that I would have a lot of sugar the whole rest of the day I would feel like crap I would feel awful I was putting way too much into my system and I thought that it was healthy because it was organic maple syrup organic date paste but whatever it is all of it at the end of the day breaks down to the same thing and it's tricking your body into thinking you need more once I stopped using so much 
much sugar in my diet. My mood was a lot easier to maintain. I started having more energy in the gym. I started having more energy with jujitsu and I started just feeling better. My overall sense of how I felt was always affected by my diet. So if I was putting a lot of sugar into my system, it made total sense that I was going to feel like crap. It got so bad that I was going to Groundworks Coffee in Venice, California, and I was buying their amazing banana cookies and I was keeping them in my car because I didn't want to tell my wife that I had cookies because if she knew that I had them, she would want them too. And then we would both be going down the dark path together. It's kind of crazy to think that I was doing that like a total addict, but I feel so much better. I've supplemented all of the sugar that I was having with stevia, liquid stevia in my smoothies and my Greek yogurt for after I train. And honestly, I don't even know the difference anymore. I don't even taste the difference. It tastes so good to me. And when I do have a little bit of actual sugar, it actually tastes too sweet for me. I don't even really enjoy it anymore. It's kind of like a, an amazing benefit when you stop something that you're addicted to. If it is reintroduced to your life like that, you might not even like it. At least that's what happened in my case. So the next thing that I quit was holding on to things, items, clothing, emotions, holding on to everything. I feel that if it's not suiting you anymore, it's really important to take a hard look at what that is. So if it's an article of clothing that you're holding on to for a sentimental reason, and if you lost it, you would be devastated, then I'm not telling you to throw that out. But if there's something in your closet that you hate every time you put it on and it just feels itchy, it doesn't feel right, but you're keeping it for whatever sentimental reason, you got it when you were in high school, you got it when you were a kid, but it really doesn't have a powerful connection to you. I'm here to tell you that if you were to just go ahead and get rid of those things, you will feel a sense of relief that is impossible to put it into words. I had so much old clothing that I brought with me when we moved across the country. Things that I grew up wearing, things that I didn't even like, that never really fit me, things that were given to me, and I didn't have the courage to just get rid of. Funny story, my dad bought me a shirt before we moved out to California, and I honestly never loved the shirt that he bought me. It was just a beautiful gesture that he did, and every time I wore it, I didn't like it. It hurt, actually. It was like itchy and hurt on me. It was just tight. Uh, it didn't feel good. I couldn't throw it away because I thought that if I got rid of that shirt, that I'd get rid of the love from my dad. And I think that that's what happens when people hold on to things. They're afraid that if they get rid of it, they don't know what's in that space. I'm here to tell you, I went through my closet and I got rid of all the stuff that I don't wear and I gave it to my wife to either sell or buy, sell, trade or donate. My closet space has so much space and my mental and physical body felt so much better. Same thing goes for any kind of negative emotion that I was holding on to. Old stories of who I used to be, things that I used to do that I no longer do. Instead of thinking about those things with a sense of shame or man, I can't believe the person that I used to be. Instead of looking at myself through that lens, I started letting go of all of the negativity that was associated with whatever I was holding on to. So if I was holding on to something that happened years ago, it wasn't suiting me in the moment. It wasn't making me a better person in the moment. If you're using your past to motivate you to be a better person, then that's amazing. Keep doing it. But if you're using your past to keep you stuck, you're just gonna stay stuck. And that's what I was doing. I was staying stuck. So stop holding on to things that aren't suiting you anymore. The next thing I stopped doing and I quit, consumerism. I know, of course, you need to buy things. Life is life. If I would get rid of something, like I just mentioned before, the old me would really want to replace that item as fast as possible with the newer, better item. Whether it was a phone, a laptop, guitar, clothing, or food, I would spend a lot of time going to stores and thinking about things that I wanted to buy. And none of those things ever made me happy. There were things that made my life easier, right? Like a faster phone for work, a better laptop to edit videos on. There are always going to be times where I'm going to buy stuff, but it's really the noise that stopped. Consumeristic noise that was always telling me you're not happy until you get the next thing. I can't tell you how much time I spent thinking about what grocery stores I wanted to go to, to buy whatever food I was craving at the time. And I would spend so much money and spend so much time and energy on dishes that I would never even make on things that would sit in my cabinet for sometimes years without even touching. The hard part in the beginning was what am I going to do with all of this time that I have on my hands now? If I don't have this hustle culture, these fast paced days, if I'm not thinking about what am I going to buy all the time, then what am I going to do with my life? And I think that right there is what keeps people stuck in that loop all the time. The next thing that I quit, and this might be controversial, negativity, negative people, negative things, negative situations, negative content, negative thoughts, all of those things. When I identify them, if I identify them to be negative, they're out. They're out of my life. I don't want it in my life. I have no space for people 
that are negative. I have no space for my negative mind. If my mind starts going down a path of negativity, I've been there before. I've spent years being there before. Those things have always brought me down. There's never been one time in my life where I've been negative and it suited me positively. Never one time. And the crazy thing is, if you're filling your life with negativity all the time, then you're only going to get negativity given back to you. Conversely, if you start to fill your life with more positivity, you will start to get positivity back. That is not a woo science, cushy, bohemian way of thinking. It is true. You get what you put in. And if you you're carrying yourself as a negative person, surrounding yourself with negative people, going home and watching internet drag videos or content about a bunch of dark stuff. How do you think you're going to feel? If you're waking up comparing yourself to other people, how do you think you're going to feel? It took me a long time to realize how much negativity I was bringing into my own life with my own habits and my own thought process. That doesn't mean I subscribe to toxic positivity because I believe toxic positivity is its own form of negativity. If something is negative and it's hurting you and you don't feel like it aligns with you, it should be gone. You'd be surprised just how much your life will improve. You can cut the negative things out. All right, the next thing that I quit, caring what people think about me. It's been completely transformational for me to find love from within. I used to think I needed everybody else's approval before I did anything for myself. And now I know the only approval that I need in life is from myself. I used to think that if I gave myself what I needed, I was going to be selfish that I was a selfish person, but I was never giving myself what I needed. I was constantly looking to other people for my own validation. If something was going well in my life, I wasn't even happy because there was never enough validation that I could get from other people. So I could have crushed it at work. I could have crushed it at home with something. And if I just got a nice job, Joe, nice job, man, it wouldn't be enough. I would still feel like, man, I wish there was more and I would feel low. So once I started realizing how much stock I was putting in other people. And I realized these people aren't thinking about me the way that I think they are. I have to be focused on me. I can't be focused on other people. I have to harness all of that energy that I'm wasting and put it within. And when I started doing that, my whole life changed. I signed up for jujitsu. I've been doing it for almost three years now, which is insane. I love it. I'm going to do it forever. And this goes hand in hand from what I'm about to tell you that I also quit holding on to my thinning hair. I finally took the plunge and just cut it all off. And I feel so liberated. I used to think, what are people going to think if I cut my hair? What are people going to think if I cut it all off? And I was caring way more about what they thought over what I wanted and what I felt. And now I feel liberated. I don't have to pay for haircuts anymore. I could do it on my own. I could save myself a bunch of money. And it's crazy because I'm 38 years old and I feel healthier and I feel younger than I've ever felt in my entire life. I feel younger than I felt when I was 20. I really do. And if anyone doesn't like the person that I am and the journey that I'm on, they're not worth my time. So the next thing that I quit is trying to fix everything all the time, especially people's problems. I promise no matter what you think, no matter how much you think that you can fix your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your mom or your dad, anybody else in your life, you can't. You cannot fix anybody. They have to want to change. And that took me a long time to figure out. And it can be uncomfortable when you're around people that want your help, that think that you can fix them. If you find yourself in a codependent relationship, or if you find yourself around people that you've historically always done everything for and showed up for them and whatever they needed all the time and tried to be the guy or the girl to fix the situation, it's going to be tempting. And they might look at you and be like, come on, you're always there. You can't do this for me. I'm coming to you with a problem right now. You can't fix it for me. You can't. I can't. I couldn't do it. Nobody in the world can do it. And I promise if you can lift that burden, like I lifted that burden for myself, whether it's a coworker or a romantic interest, family member or whoever, a close friend that's going through something, being there for them and fixing their problems are two different things. Supporting people when they need support is vastly different than trying to step in and fix their problems. But your glass needs to remain full. Your glass cannot be emptied. You cannot deplete yourself to fix other people. The next thing that I quit was being judgmental. I was a very judgmental person of others and what they were doing and how it could affect my life. It took me a long time to realize that by being judgmental to other people, I was really unhappy with my own life. So if I saw something in another person's world that I wanted and I envied, it was easy for me to be judgmental on the surface. But deep down inside, I was hurting and I wanted what I thought they had. I remember seeing a friend of mine post photos of their trip to Italy and it was around the time that I had realized I hadn't taken a vacation with my wife in a long time. And when I saw the photos, I started feeling very judgy towards them, feeling very icky, judgy judging what they were wearing, judging what they were doing, thinking, oh, they did this, they did that. And it hit me. That was the day it hit me. I was like, what am I doing? I'm feeling judgmental because I want that. I want that. I have to make that for myself if I want that. I can go online right now and book the same trip if I wanted to. I have the means to do it. I have the time off if I want to do it. I'm holding myself back. And in reality, it's fostering this world of negativity all over again because I'm not feeling 
good about who I am in that moment when I'm being judgmental. I forget who said it. I don't know if anybody said it, but I'll just say it. You can't be judgmental and be happy at the same time. It's an important thing to use solid judgment when you're entering situations, but being a judgmental person and always looking at it from a judgmental lens like I was doing, it's just going to bring you down. And honestly, people aren't going to want to be around you. People will feel uncomfortable around you if they know that you're constantly judgmental. It's one thing to be a funny, cynical person, but if you're cynical with like a lighthearted sense of like, you don't give a and you're not taking yourself too seriously, it's funny. But if you're a judgmental person and you take yourself really seriously, who's gonna wanna be around you? Do you even wanna be around yourself? Would you wanna be around yourself? Probably not. And the last thing that I quit, saying yes to absolutely everything. I am so happy that I don't have to say yes to things all the time anymore. If I had a time machine and I can go back to all of the times that I didn't wanna do something, that I said yes to it out of fear or out of judgment or out of stress or whatever the case was, I would turn all of those yeses into no and I know that I would feel like a better person. There is no better feeling than not having to go somewhere that you don't want to go. There is no better feeling than living your truest life. And if something doesn't align with you, whether it's an activity, going out with your friends to the bar, going over somewhere that you really don't want to go, saying yes to a concert on a weeknight and you just want to relax, <laughs> saying yes to a friend's child's third birthday party in the middle of the summer, saying yes to having a friend visit for a week. Man, I freed up so much space in my life by just saying no. By saying no to things that you don't wanna do, you are truly saying yes to yourself. If something doesn't align with what you wanna do, you don't have to do it. And if the people that are inviting you are making you feel bad about not wanting to do something that doesn't align with your lifestyle, those are not people that you want in your life, period end. Even if you've been friends with them through proximity all of your life, because they're looking out for their own interests. They're upset that you're not doing something for them. And if it's a true friend, they will understand this doesn't align with you and they'll still love you anyway. I have plenty of friends that know that I don't drink. I have plenty of friends that know that I don't like to stay out late. I talk to them all the time. And when I see them, they know that that's the type of environments that I like. And they're not going to make me feel bad about things that I don't want to do. And if any of them did, they wouldn't be in my life. It's very easy for me to say that now. Because honestly, life is too short to be doing things that you don't want to do. It's probably my favorite thing that I gave up was saying yes to everything. Because now when I do say yes, it's something I truly align with. And if it's not something that I truly align with, it's very easy for me to say pass. All right, guys, thank you so much. From the bottom of my heart, it really means the world that you watched all the way to the end. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything in your life that you've quit or given given up. I would love discussion in the comments about these things. It's something that I'm super passionate about. I've never felt healthier and stronger in my life. Honestly, I feel like I have a new lease on life as cheesy as it sounds. Thank you so much. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great day. You got this.